Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna do a guide of how to boost your FPS on Naraka Blade Point. We're gonna start with uh, an optimization of Windows, and after that we're gonna start uh, the optimization inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now the graphics settings. So first of all, the API, you just have DirectX 11. DirectX X12 will uh, soon be supported. Um, so normally Direct X12 can run like good on like a brand new video card for the past like two years if you have like a 1080, 1070, something like that. So definitely I'm going to do some testing. But if you're playing on an older computer, don't even bother to test it. Just go with Direct X11. For the render scale, I recommend to go with 100. Uh, don't downscale your game. 
Uh, if you're struggling with your FPS, use technology like the Radiant Super Resolution or the NVIDIA NIS. So the image scaling, you just like uh, lower the resolution of your game and the driver will upscale it back. So this is the best way to increase your FPS with those type of technology. For display mode, I really recommend to go with full screen. Don't use window or borderless. It's causing like stuttering. You will lose also FPS. So super important to do that. For the resolution, just play native. So depending on your monitor, if you have a 1080p monitor, 2K, 4K, whatever, just play native. For the max frame rate, I'm locking my, my frame rate at 170. Um, it really depends on what you want to do and do you have an issue with your thermal. I see a, a lot of people who uh, unblock their FPS on their laptop and they have like a 60 Earth screen. And uh, it, yeah, they're running like 90, 95 FPS, but they, they have like after that, like thermal issue, they're getting stuttering. They don't understand why. So the CPU and the GPU are now throttling because their uh, the temperature is too high. So really like don't go too crazy with the frame rate. And this this game takes a lot of like um, it's pushing a lot my CPU uh, when I record. Also, when I play this game, I'm going at 70, like eight degree. That's really high if I compare with other games. So just look at that. I recommend just lock it with your amount of urge that you have. Filter go with default HDR display off. For the V-Sync, I'm going with off if you have like a free sync or G-Sync monitor, you don't need V-Sync. Um, if you have a lot of tiering and you don't like that, you can definitely activate your V-Sync, but it will add input lag and it's kind of important with a game like that. Normally when I do a guide like this for a solo game, I don't really care, but this one is, is a bit tricky. So uh, just like test it. If you don't feel the input lag, just go with on. If you're feeling it, just removing it. Anti-aliasing algorithm, I, go, I recommend to go with off. Uh, you have two options, SMAA, TAA. You don't add FXAA. So just go with off. You will gain 6% boost in your FPS. And also the anti-aliasing, the implementation in this game is not very good. Uh, the game looks a little bit blurry. So that's why I just re uh, recommend to removing it. I recommend also to remove motion blur. You don't want those uh, <laughs> sense of motion uh, when you're playing this game. Everything is like kind of blurry when you move fast. So super important to deactivate that. If you have access to DLSS and you're struggling with your FPS, definitely use it. You can expect a nice 15 to 20 percent boost in your FPS. But if you have a good card like a 1080, something like that, and you're not struggling with your FPS, don't use the DLSS. Uh, in this game, the implementation is not very good. Uh, I see a lot of like noise in the image, so not a huge fan. But if you're struggling with your FPS, it can be very good. Graphic enhancement go with off. NVIDIA Reflex, if you have an NVIDIA card and you can uh, activate this, go for it. You will reduce the delay on your PC when you're playing this game. And for the Allied, I don't recommend to using it. Uh, it's causing also stuttering when you're playing the game. Model accuracy, um, this one you can definitely go with medium. If I compare lowest to low, you can expect a 1% boost in your FPS. Low to medium, another 1%. But if you go to high, you're going to lose 3%. So medium seems to be a good balance over there. Desolation, you can also run high normally if you have something like a video card 5 years ago or more recent. If you're playing on an old AMD Radeon like an R9 280X, uh, lower their tessellation, they're struggling with that, but uh, honestly, like any modern card can run tessellation easily. After that, for the effect, this one will stabilize your FPS. If I compare IS to low, you can expect like 12% boost in your FPS and just like stabilize everything when you have like explosion and stuff like that. So really important in this game, just go with low. For the texture, it only depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your video card. So if you have 4 gig of VRAM and more, go with high, 3 gig medium, 2 gig low. And if you're playing like an integrated GPU with only 1 gig of VRAM, definitely go with lowest. After that, shadows. This is pretty much the parameter that will provide you the most of FPS. So if I compare IS to lowest, you can expect a nice 22% boost in your FPS. So honestly, when you start your guide, just start with shadow. Put it at lowest, retest your game, and if you're still struggling with the FPS, just do all the other stuff that I'm showing you. But this one is the most, like, uh, it's tanking the FPS a lot. Volumetric lighting, I recommend to go with low. You can expect 10% if you compare IS to low. 
um, and it will help you again a lot to stabilize and boost your FPS. Volumetric Cloud also it's it's doing a, a great job when you're removing it. So IS to off you can expect a nice nine percent boost in your FPS. So super important to put this one at off. Ambient Occlusion you can expect another eight percent boost when you're removing it. The only issue is your game will look flat, but it's really depend on what's your goal. Do you really want like to try hard and have like pure performance? If the uh, answer is yes, just go with off with this one. Screen, screen space reflection. I'm putting this one at off. Really depend on my uh, main PC. I don't have any issue with it, but on my laptop with uh, with the 1050 uh, mobile GTX, it's causing a lot of like lag, uh, stuttering. So I just removing it and everything is m smoother. So if you are playing like a like a, you have a uh, 1070 something like that you can definitely go with medium it doesn't have like a huge impact but it has a, a huge impact if you're playing on an old computer integrate video card or like a mobile gpu stuff like that uh, if that just go with off anti housing i recommend like i said go with low i'm not a huge fan of the implementation the game looks blurry with anti-aliasing in this game so just go with low for this one and you will gain a nice five percent boost in your fps and for the post-processing, I recommend to lowest, you will gain another 6% boost in your FPS. And also, uh, it will help with the visibility of your image. So less blurriness and stuff like that with those post-process effects. So that's why I recommend to go with lowest. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Naraka Blade Point Guide. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.